Hi gang, Jess Hartley here. Welcome to part one of my Dystopia Rising LARP adventure vlog. I'm going to be sharing some footage that I shot at the Dystopia Rising Oregon LARP, uh, including some really cool shots that I got of people's costumes and some of the physical representations, phys reps of items that are out there, the props and that kind of thing. Um, I really had a fun time and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. So that being said, let's go. Hi guys, Jess here. I'm just getting ready to head out to Dystopia Rising, Oregon, which is a LARP I'm really looking forward to going to this weekend. And as I was packing the car, I realized that I wanted to take a second to show you one of the really cool props that I have for my character. So in Dystopia Rising, each character has one or more professions. Um, some of them are combat oriented. Your character could be a soldier or a thug or a primitive, a sniper or a gunslinger. They could even be an assassin. Some of the professions are more social or economic minded. Your character might be a merchant or a scoundrel or a politician. And each one of those um, professions have various skills that are associated with it. Some uh, professions are focused on crafting. Um, you could be a tinker, which is someone who makes small items like swords and armor. You could be an engineer who makes big items like workbenches and stills. You could be a brewer, which obviously makes brews, or a cook that makes meals. My character is a printer. So if you are a crafting profession, your character has uh, a certain small amount of items that they inherently know how to make. If you're a brewer, for example, you might know how to make something called water of life, that's a healing potion, or snake oil, which is also a healing potion. Um, but if you wanna make fancier things or, or broader spectrum of things, you need blueprints. And blueprints are literally pieces of blue paper with instructions on them about how to make those more advanced items. There's blueprints for brews, there's blueprints for meals, there's blueprints for swords and armor and workstations and all kinds of things. Literally hundreds and hundreds of blueprints. So my character is a printer. She specializes in collecting, reproducing, and selling and spreading knowledge via these blueprints. And different crafters have different kinds of crafting stations. The basic station for a printer is a printer's table, which is basically just a table. Uh, it's got, you know, maybe you've got phys physical representations of um, pens or sharpening stones for quill uh, knives or um, ink wells or that sort of thing. Um, but when you get to a more advanced level, there is something in the game called a gold leaf printing press. And uh, this is an item that allows printers to reproduce blueprints, which are otherwise not reproducible, non-transcribable. And it takes a lot of mental energy in order to use one. And they require a physical representation, as many advanced items do, of a, uh, a particular type. In this case, a, uh, a block printing press. So when my character got her first gold leaf printing press, I really wanted a cool fizz rep for it. But one of the challenges about LARPing is that when you're getting all of your stuff to the game, you've only got a finite space in your car. So while I wanted to have a huge, massive, Fizz rep for this printing press, I also had some space constraints and weight constraints on how much I could pack in and out of the site, how much I could get in my car, um, how much space I wanted it to take up in my house between games and that kind of thing. So I brainstormed with my husband, Pat, uh, who runs a company, owns a company called Bad Bear Labs, and he does, among other things, some really cool uh, fizz reps for LARP games. Um, I'll show you guys later. He made me an amazing weapon for my character that looks like a roll of rolled up blueprints. And I, it's just, it brings me so much happiness every time I see it. But when he and I were talking about the gold leaf printing press, we had a couple things that we wanted to keep in mind. We needed it to be light um, because I'm 50 plus years old and I don't want to haul a 50 pound gold leaf printing press across site to set it up and tear it down. Um, it needed to be compact so that it would store well between games and also so it would store well in the car because if it's a delicate item and it gets other things uh, layered on top of it, uh, that can spell disaster for a fizz wrap. And it needed to look 
awesome. So what we came up with is this. This is my gold leaf printing press. As you can see, it's based on a wooden crate that we pre-bought. And if you look at it from the outside, it's got a gold leaf on the front. This actually says Bareford 6100 gold leaf press, and it's got a, uh, a maple leaf and a bear paw on it for Bad Bear Labs. And um, the cool thing about this is the, this piece on the top here is foam that has been customized to look like wood. It's got little, little um, uh, veining in it like, like uh, wood does and little bits of uh, places where it looks like insects have bit through it and that sort of thing. But the cool thing about the lid to this is it actually flips over and becomes the base of the, or the, the top of the printing press. So we've got a couple of pieces inside here. This piece fits right in the top and there's in the, the wood box itself, it's got some uh, wooden pieces in the corner to reinforce it. Also, these act as uh, supports so that this foam piece, which is super, super light, uh, doesn't slip down all the way inside of the box. Uh, as you can see, there is also a gold leaf on this side and this is uh, made all of it to look like wood. It's got reinforcements at the corners so that it looks like it's being held together by metal. Uh, and this piece just slides right in the top like this. Um, this piece is the press plate. Again, this is just a couple of ounces, um, if that. It's just tiny, tiny light, light foam. Um, and it slips right in like this. And this piece is the plunger mechanism for moving the press up and down. So close together. And this is actually put together with magnets so that when I lift uh, the plunger piece, it actually raises and lowers the press piece here. And so this on a regular press is where you put the paper, and you have the, the uh, ink and the, the blocks to uh, support uh, or to uh, replicate whatever it is you're trying to um, prints. So as you can see, this all fits together really neatly and you have very much the look of a miniature gold leaf printing press. This is one of my favorite parts of it, however. He put together this really cool little key so you can actually lift this up and put it like this and it stays up like that. So it actually gives it much more of a, a 3D feel to it, which I just, I think it's so nifty. And when you're done at the end of the weekend, you undo the magnet, take it apart, take this piece off, slip these and the key and the handle right inside it. Slip this back together, and you've got no delicate parts that are sticking out. You can stick this uh, right in the car. You can even put other things on top of it. The um, the uh, foam, of course, is is delicate, but the wood rim of the crate uh, helps support it. So if I put something bigger, as long as it's resting on that wood piece, it's perfectly fine. So this is my gold leaf printing press and I love it so much. Um, like I said, it was made by my husband who is the owner and proprietor of Bad Bear Labs. Um, I'm gonna put a link to his studio down below in the comment section. So um, he's always taking commissions. He does some amazing stuff. A lot of the folks uh, in Dystopia Rising have discovered what an amazing craftsperson he is. So, but sometimes there's a benefit to being married to him. I get the really, really cool stuff. So uh, I'm going to go finish packing the car and um, I will talk to you guys later. 
Hi guys, Jess here. I'm just getting ready to head out to Dystopia Rising, Oregon. Uh, we'll be doing some LARPing this weekend and it's daylight, which is lovely. It means I'll be able to get some better footage than I did uh, last time I went out. Um, I've got this new gimbal that I'm using. Uh, it's kind of a gyroscopic selfie stick. Uh, it's got Bluetooth to allow me to uh, uh, turn on and off um, the footage uh, as I'm uh, from, from the stick rather than having to reach up and touch the screen, which is kind of neat. Um, but it's new technology and I am not really technology uh, prone so bear with me if the footage gets a little wonky in here i can do some cool things though see i can scroll nope nope okay well i've got it uh locked in so that it's following my face now which is kind of cool but it won't let me scroll up and down or left and right like i can if i'm not um looking at myself so uh we're going to be going out um to like i said to dystopia rising a uh, larp and i'm gonna try and get you some really cool footage of costumes and prop pieces um one of the things i love the most about live action role playing is the uh the effort that so many players put into just doing amazing amazing creativity crafts wise um so we're gonna try and get some cool footage of that um hopefully we'll get there before game starts and we'll be able to um, help people with some setup and maybe talk to some people while they're setting up um, and uh, Dystopia Rising Oregon has a cool out of game area that's across a little bridge in the parking area which um, people use when they need to go out and uh, indulge their nicotine habits or that sort of thing so there's a possibility we may even get to do some interviews with people while they're out of game I definitely don't want to mess with anyone's immersion by recording things while game is actually going on but it's possible with this new uh, gimbal that I might be able to be out of game over in the parking lot and still get some recording of combat or that sort of thing kind of from a distance without messing with anybody's immersion. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so I'm going to head out now. Uh, it's about a two and a half, three hour drive to where uh, the game is held. Uh, and I want to get there in time to help people start setting up. And so I'll record more when we get on the road. Well, not on the road but when we get down there bye I decided to experiment a little bit with the gimbal and see how it works while I'm walking so I'm taking you with me out to the car now and uh, we'll see how this goes so far it looks like it's pretty neat I uh, I'm a, a firm uh, sell on this already so um, oh, look at that. He did the turn really nicely. Oh, there we go. Okay, wonderful. So I'm really looking forward to a uh, game this weekend. There's some really cool plots going on. Uh, in LARPs, quite often we call them mods, uh, modules, which is similar to the, um, you know, the terminology that you use for tabletop role-playing games. Uh, in this case, the mods are not written out, um, you know, by a company or that kind of thing, but they're actually created by the storytellers uh, that are... Uh, that are um, hired by Dystopia Rising's branches to create that content for their players. Um, all of the mods um, have different focuses. Some of them are combat oriented. Some of them may be um, social role play, religious role play. Um, there's all kinds of different things. I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, Dystopia Rising Oregon has in star store for us this weekend. So uh, the gimbal's working pretty good and I'm going to sign off because it's time to get in the car now. Bye. Well, I can tell already that one of the things is going to, that is going to take some getting used to with this gimbal is arm strength. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's a little bit heavy um, and holding it out at arm's length for any length of time is kind of tiring. So I'm going to have to start doing some push-ups. Um, but it's really cool. I really like the fact that it seems to keep everything very, um, very non-shaky, which is great. Um, if you are doing vlogging yourself, I would really recommend investing in something like this. They're not super expensive. Um, I think this one was around a hundred dollars. Um, so it's, you know, it's not a tiny expense, but the results seem to be really, really cool so far. Um, I can do things like this. Ooh, look, panned left. Ooh, panned right. I can pan up just in case you really want to see the roof of my car. Um, I could pan down, but that's even worse. So um, I really, I like it so far. This is very, very interesting. Oh, and apparently I can. Oh, nope. I'm in tracking mode, so it can't uh, zoom in and zoom out. But that's an option that I can do with this too, apparently. So that's kind of neat. 
Hey, thanks for checking out part one of my Dystopia Rising Oregon LARP adventure. I'm going to be working on part two next, so make sure you like and subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss any of the episodes when they come out. Also, if you click on that bell, it'll notify you when new vlog episodes from me are going to be coming out. So that'll be fun. You should do that. Uh, thanks. Bye.